major changes at the ACT and what they mean for you. That is the topic of today's video. My name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions coach. You can learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process on my website, which is collegemeister.com. And if you're interested in learning about whether or not you are or your student is on track for selective college admission in the United States of America, visit areyouontracktogetin.com. Again, that's areyouontrack to get in.com at which you will complete a free three minute assessment. Your results will be emailed to you right away and they will help you clarify whether or not you are or your student is on track for selective college admission in the United States of America. The first big change is that the science section of the ACT, which has long intimidated actual and potential ACT test takers is becoming optional. Yes, you heard that right. Optional in 2025 for some and in 2026 for others. Let me explain. Students will have the ability to choose whether to take the science section, which up until now has been a required section of the test. English, reading, and math will remain as the core sections of the ACT test that will result in a college reportable score. Like the writing section, which is already optional, science will be offered as an additional section. This means students can choose to take the ACT, the ACT plus science, the ACT plus writing, or the ACT plus science and writing. As a result, the ACT composite score will be the average of the English reading and math scores. The composite and section scores will continue to be reported on the same 1 to 36 scale, and those behind the ACT believe that colleges will continue to use these scores as, quote, powerful indicators of achievement and college readiness, end quote. Students will also continue to be able to take the test online or with paper and pencil, which is nice. I hope that continues well into the future, but who knows? Second big change at ACT is that the ACT is reducing its length by up to one third, depending on which version of the test students take, meaning the electronic versus the paper. The new core test will last just two hours compared to three hours for the current test. To achieve this, the test will include shorter passages on the reading and English sections and fewer questions in each section, 44 questions total, which will allow students more time to answer each question. Both of these major changes, along with other enhancements to modernize the test, will roll out starting with national online testing in spring 2025. And then for school day testing, all the way in spring 2026. Let's hope we're all here then in 2026. So members of the high school class of 2026 and later are going to be the ones most impacted by these major changes to the ACT. Now, with that in mind, it's assumed probably with more time, uh, students may be more attracted to taking the ACT. Many students have been cowled by the rigor of the ACT, mainly because the, the pace of the ACT. And so with the pacing slowed down a little bit because questions are being cut uh, and more time allowed per question, maybe more students will come around to wanting to take the ACT. Also, now that they won't have to necessarily take the ACT with science, that could also uh, convert a few questioning students about whether or not they really want to engage with the ACT. Uh, so keep all that in mind. If you are a member of the high school class of 2026 or younger, I'm going to give you the advice I always give students, which is I strongly recommend that you take a practice ACT at home and score it, a practice SAT at home and score it, and then compare your scores on one test to the other. Uh, and see if you are liking the vibe and the feel and the score that you're producing on one test more than the other, because if you are, and it's notably better, then you can really just focus in on that one test. But if you're sort of 
equal on both tests or you don't know which one you really like the best, in that situation, I would strongly recommend that you continue to prepare for both tests. But now at least you won't have the pressure potentially, and that's a big potentially, of taking the ACT with science. The reason I say potentially is we don't know what college's response to this will be. Certain colleges that are currently requiring the SAT and or ACT, or it's not and or, or the ACT for admissions purposes may continue to want to receive the ACT with the science section. Others very well could say, you know what? It's not required anymore by the test makers. So we as the test receivers or the test scores receivers, uh, we don't require that anymore. So it will be interesting to see how colleges and universities throughout the United States respond to this change over the coming months and frankly years as it is slowly but surely implemented fully by spring 2026, but at least partially by spring 2025, in which case, again, if you are a a student in the class of 2026, the high school class of 2026, you got to make your plans accordingly. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my channel. While I'm not an SAT or ACT tutor, if you want support throughout the entire college admissions process on all other matters related to college admissions coaching, you want to go to my website, which is collegemeister.com. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and most importantly, stay stress-free throughout the entire college admissions process.